Hey guys, thank you for checking out this video. My name is George. In this video, we will discuss on how to read an input device just like these buttons with ESP32 using MicroPython programming language. Buttons is a type of a switch that connects switch terminals when being pressed while disconnects it when being released. Buttons is one of a momentary switch popularly used today. Buttons are commonly used as user interface for consumer products just like in a game consoles, vendors, and toy products. What I have here are button modules from Gorilla Cell ESP32 development kit. The kit comes with four pieces of it with the different colors, which are red, green, blue, and yellow button cups. Button modules has three pins, namely G for the ground pin, V for the VCC for supply voltage, and S for the input signal pin. For this experiment, you will also need the following. An ESP32 development board with a MicroPython firmware inside, which will serve as the main microcontroller. An ESP32 shield from Gorilla Cell ESP32 development kit, which will serve as ESP32 pin extension to pin headers for easy access and easy circuit connection. A 3 pin female to female DuPont wires. And of course, the buttons itself. I already had it set up in advance where the ESP32 is attached on top of the ESP32 shield. I also attached the DuPont jumper wires to the single buttons, which is the red button, by following a color coding, which is black for the ground, red for the VCC, and yellow for the signal pin. I attach the other end of the DuPont jumper wires to the ESP32 shield pin headers by matching the colors of the wires to the colors of the pin headers, which is black to black, red to red, and yellow to yellow pin headers. For this experiment, I choose GPIO32 to serve as the input signal pin for the red button module. For the software part, I prepared here Three example source code for this demonstration. Now for example number one, let us learn the basics of reading an input device just like this red button module. Let me click the run button to execute example number one. These button modules are configured as active high, meaning the value is one or logic high when being pressed, while the value is zero or logic low when the button is being released or not pressed. And let's use the REPL for this demonstration. To read the value of the button, we can use the button object, that is button, that value, Open and close parentheses and hit enter. Now the value is zero because the switch is not pressed. Let me press the arrow up and let me press and hold the red button and hit enter. And as you can see, the button value is now logic high or one. Let me read again. Let me release and read. And the value is zero. Please do not confuse with this value method. A value method with an empty parameter is used to read an input pin. While if you put a value inside, it will be used for an output. Let's use the LED, which is set as an output pin. LED, 
that value now you will put a value inside it and the onboard led is turned on to turn it off you just put a value of zero and by the way you can also use this led that value open and close parentheses to read the current state of the pin for the led hit enter it's now zero if you send a value of one and you read it you can read a value of one now let's see example number two i will attach additional two buttons for this example this is to demonstrate how to read multiple inputs let me set aside the yellow so i just connected additional buttons which is the green button and the blue button so let me select example number two and let me click the run current script notice that i renamed the button to red button for clarity purpose i also added the instantiation for the green button and the blue button which are connected on gpio 33 and gpio 34 respectively we also use an infinite loop using the while true statement so that we can continuously check if any of the buttons is being pressed. If any of the buttons is pressed, that is, when read, the value is 1, it will print that the current button is pressed. Else, nothing will be displayed in the repo. If any of the buttons is pressed, a print message will be displayed accordingly in the repo. Let me press the red button, which will print a message in the repo. Red button is pressed. Let me press the blue button. And the blue button is pressed, message is displayed in the repo. Let me press the green button. Okay, we also use a 200 milliseconds of delay here to prevent multiple detection of button press. And the onboard LED is used as an indicator that our program is running effectively by toggling its value. So basically, we read the current value of the LED and we toggled it, then we write it to the value of the LED so that it will become an output. So here, the LED pin is read while here, it is written to the LED pin. So let's see another example. Example number three will demonstrate a simple increment or decrement counter that you may use on your next project. Let me click the stop button. And select example number three let me click the run button to execute it so it says here counter value is currently zero now when the red button is pressed the counter will increment just like this red button is pressed the counter value is incremented to one from zero to one it is incremented using this counter chains value. When the red button is pressed, the counter value is incremented according to the counter chains value here. So if this is set to 10, it will increment by 10. And the message is printed to the repo. Counter value incremented to brackets is used as a placeholder for this dot format method which will insert the counter value to this placeholder now let me increment once more in another one so now the counter value is incremented to three to decrement it we can use the blue button now the value is two once more it will become one and the green button will reset it to the default counter value which is this one 
which is according to this one. I will reset it to zero. Now let me change the code. Click the stop button first. And let's change. Let's say, let's increment the counter by 3. And let's have a value of maybe 7 or 9. Okay. Let me save it and click the run button. So now the counter value is currently 9 as set here. And it should increment by 3. If I press the red button, it will increment by 3. So it should be 12. Another one, it should be 15. Or decrement it using the blue button. 12, 9, 6, 3, 0. And let me press the green button to reset it to the default value. And the counter value is reseted to 9. So that's it. I hope you learned something from this. As always, the source code that is in here including additional information can be found at my blog post at techtotinker.blogspot.com. Links in the video description. If you have any concern regarding this tutorial, be sure to write your message in the comment box provided. And if you enjoyed this video, please do like and share so that it can reach more people who might benefit from this. Please don't forget to subscribe and turn on the notification bell because I will be uploading more videos like this in the future. Thank you and see you next time. God bless.